my name is Lila Jane, and this is actually my first video that I'm posting on this channel. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if not, then you'll w then the video I posted before this will be one that I filmed with my sister. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, and we were reacting to her edits. And, sorry, my dog's in the room. Uh, today, I'm going to be reacting to six, 600, um, 162 horror stories animated. We're not going to be listening to the entire thing because it because it's literally nine hours long. But, you know, anyway, uh, let's react. I was 20 at the time when this happened. I still remember this as a vivid memory in my brain that would never get erased. Oh, by the way, I am home alone, so it's making it 20 times scarier. Anyway. One day, I was at a club with a few friends. I saw a cute girl, which was totally my type at first glance. She had blonde hair and deep brown eyes. Her nose was tiny and cute. Her lips were red like a rose. I approached her and I asked if she wanted a drink or something. She said yeah, and we drank a lot. She told me to come by her place. I hesitated at first, but soon I agreed. I told my friends that I was leaving early, and we booked a cab. We got in the cab, and 15 minutes later, we arrived at her house. Her apartment had a two floor, nothing special, but just normal. We stepped inside, and all of a sudden, I smelled something rotten dead body there is going to be a dead body i got a bit nauseous and asked her if i could use the bathroom she smiled and said yes i rushed in and as i did the smell got stronger that's where i hate when they do that like surprise like creepy music because it always like sends chills up my spine it's so like bad where the smell was coming from at first i didn't pay attention and puked into the sink. I thought that I had drunk a bit too much, but it was not. Just then, I heard a splash of water right beside the bathtub. Don't go look! I turned and opened a shower curtain, and then what I saw made my heart drop. A dead body of a boy around my age, mutilated, was lying in the bathtub obliquely. As I got closer, I realized that his right leg was cut off, too. I was freaked out. I wanted to scream, but it didn't come out. But I decided not to go outside, because she might be a psychopath killer and could kill me, too. Really? You just found a dead body in her bathtub? Of course she's a psychopath. I tried to find an escape. Then I spotted something that I wasn't expecting. A small pocket knife stuck out from his jean pocket. I cautiously took the knife and flicked the door open. There was no one outside, and only that girl was sitting on the steps. I asked her what was in the bathtub, and suddenly, her expression got different. She flashed a maniac grin, and then she took out something from her back. A knife. All of a sudden, she lunged toward me, but I dodged it. I took out my knife and swung around as soon as she came to me and kicked her. She let out a scream as she fell to the ground. I heard some noise upstairs, but I wasn't going to check that out. I sprinted out the door and ran two blocks straight without stopping and then called the cops. The cops searched the whole house and arrested three people, all charged for murdering innocent young boys. Then I took a cab back to my house. Whoa, okay, that's just scary. This is why I trust no one. I called and told my parents about this incident. I wasn't able to sleep that night at all. This was the scariest I've ever experienced. <laughs> and who knew what would have happened if I didn't find that knife? You probably would have died. My mom used to work as a taxi driver, and she started to go out with one of her co-workers. 
That's... Let's call him Larry for the sake of the he story. Gives... He's... Whoa, he gives a bad vibe and he's an animated character. Um... Seemed like a nice guy at first. Finally, they got married and had a daughter, and we will call her Ruby. But once they got married, things started to change it's in so me. Windy outside and, like, leaves are flying he he comes... was not a nice guy after all. If something didn't go his way, he always ran to his mom's house. Because in her mind, he was still her baby, even though he was a 50-year-old man. He was such a mama's you boy. Be, you will always be your parents, baby. Mom and Larry no would break up and make up a lot. So that was just normal behavior. But when he got drunk, sometimes we didn't let him inside the house as he can become a violent person. He'd break in by smashing a window to get Gosh. in on occasion. Well, he would not okay. hurt us, but broke things like a TV or a family member's computer, which made us terrified. The final straw was when he came into our house one day. He kidnapped Ruby and ran away for two days until the police arrested him and brought Ruby back home, even though Larry was her dad. Mom was literally traumatized by this incident. We decided to move out of our house. And it was a great idea to move away from him at a safe distance. We had none of his belongings, so he had no reason to come crawling back to us. So we moved out, and as time went by, we settled into the new house. We all started school, and I always woke up extra early to shower and play video games before I went to school. But this one day, when I woke up at 4 a.m. and finished taking a shower, I came out of the bathroom and looked out of the window unintentionally. It was still dark, and there was a man who was walking up and down the path by the side of our house. Suddenly, he looked up and stared at me. He realized that I saw him. I stood there and did nothing. Then he walked away and stood under the streetlight. It was Larry. He had the most malevolent smile I've ever seen. He came over to the mailbox saying that he was sorry. He said that he wanted to talk to my mom so they could start oh. over again. 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. and you believe him? I ran to mom and woke her up. But we decided to call the police instead of letting him inside. About 10 minutes later, the police came to arrest him. <clears throat> They found out that he drove a car while drunk and left it halfway up the road. And when they searched him, he had a surgical scalpel in his pocket. He told the police that it was just a joke, but no one believed him. Yeah. When I was a kid, I was. A I didn't read the title. Uh oh. <clears throat> when I was a kid. I was really into paranormal things, such as ghosts and spirits, so I always got really excited for Halloween. On one Halloween, my parents took me and my brother to a ghost tour in the city. <clears throat> During the tour, we would visit real haunted houses, which were said to have some really violent ghosts. I couldn't be more excited. We arrived at the location for the tour meetup, an empty parking lot. But we were a bit early and nobody else had arrived yet. It was a chilly October night, so my parents decided that we should find a building to wait in until more people arrive. We walked over to the building that the parking lot was meant for, an old hotel, and entered the vestibule. We tried to fully enter the building, but we found that the doors leading to the lobby inside were locked. After a few minutes of standing around, I started to feel strange. A nauseous feeling had swept my stomach. Goosebumps ran up and down my arms, and a piercing feeling of being watched was stabbing, almost burning my back. Looking around, it was obvious that me and my family were the only ones inside the vestibule. The lobby of the, Why would you walk inside? the building was also devoid of people. Once we saw people enter the parking lot, we left 
and I felt better. And after that, I was shocked to see the first place we stopped on the tour was the building my family had been waiting in. Now, this building we won't enter, because the spirit inside here is more violent than the others will encounter. The guide stated, In here, we have the Shadow Man. He doesn't terrorize the whole building, just the area that you enter through. He's been known to slap and scratch people coming inside. A few pictures were passed around. All of a sudden, I don't know how and why, but I recognize that an inky black figure stood against the door's windows. Oh its God. eyes were glowing. Girl, don't do that. Glowing white, and it had long fingers and pointed nails. It was freaky to think that I might have been targeted by the Shadow Man, but I didn't think much of it until after the tour when my family went back home. I started to complain to my mom that my back was itching and burning, so she grabbed some ointment and told me she would look at it. We thought it was just a bug bite. We had been walking- It's gonna be scratches, I know it is. Cause like she had like an itching and burning feeling on her back. Walking around outside at night after all. When she lifted my shirt, she asked when I had scratched my back. I told her I hadn't. She took a picture on her phone and showed it to me. I was met with a long red scratch leading from my shoulder to the middle of my back. The skin on my back was a shade of red, like a rash. Me and all of my family couldn't say anything, but just turned back straight to our house. The Shadow Man Stop! Oh my gosh! had got me. Jeez, I hate that music. This is not about my story, but someone from my church, and he wanted to share his experience with anyone else. He's a 32-year-old man, and his pseudo-name is Mark. Really? He's a fairly big guy, and this situation took place when he was on his way home from work. He said that he had lost his phone one week before this whole situation happened, so he couldn't call and get any help during this story. It was quite late, around 11 p.m. He had finished work and was walking to a taxi stop location, and when he got there... A few people were standing around waiting as well. After about two minutes, he noticed that there was a minivan approaching. Usually minivans are cheaper than taxis, and he felt tired that day, so he decided to take the minivan. He sat on a seat, and there was a young boy seated in the passenger side Hello. next to the driver who was collecting the fare. And then, two other boys who looked like teenagers also boarded the minivan and sat in the seats in front of him. Once the minivan took off, after about five minutes, the boy asked if they would like to drink some Coke. The boys accepted and started drinking. And they also gave it to Mark. Mark was also feeling thirsty, so he took it, but only a sip. Not much later, he started feeling drowsy. Just before he about laid his head on the seat beside him, he noticed that those two boys were already knocked out. After he laid his head down, he heard noises coming from the back seats. Two people were talking in a different language. The car was passing a big signboard that showed Crest Chicken Farm. And then he finally passed out. When he got up, he found himself inside a big shed-like barn, and there were some tools on a big table. He was on the floor, and the other two teenage boys were laying next to him. He still felt a bit drowsy, but he managed to get himself up as he was looking for an escape. He saw that the two boys were still passed out, so he tried waking them, but they wouldn't budge. As Mark was kind of a big man, he tried to see if he could carry one of them, but it was hard to do because even Mark was having a hard time to stand properly. And then, he heard voices he took a peek from the door and three people were walking toward the big shed, coming from a house on the hill, which was quite close to the shed. Mark panicked and tried to look for another exit. He was looking around the place and he found one at the end of the shed, luckily. He approached quietly and escaped as fast as he could. At this point, his vision was all blurry 
but he managed to find a fence door and unlocked it. He heard the people shouting, but he ignored. He just kept on running. When he finally reached his house, it was early morning, around 5 a.m. His wife was up all night waiting for him and ran out the front door as soon as she saw him. He collapsed and slept for almost the whole day. When he woke up and finally got a chance to explain to his wife what had transpired that night, he remembered about the other two boys who were still there. Then he contacted the police immediately. He told the police about the road signs and a big billboard for Crest Chicken Farm and other things that he could remember. About two weeks after, there was a police report about how they found two teenage boys' bodies in a lake and advised that when they examined the bodies, all their organs were missing. Mark just stood in fear. And as the event was too traumatic for him, Mark had to quit a job for a while. This happened when it was our school's camping day. <clears throat> All the grades went to each other's places, and our teacher had taken the six students to this large site that was quite cheap. It started off all right. I got a room with some of my friends at the time, and my closer friends were in the next room. The first incident started when I was the only one in my room, still packing mine and the other people's stuff away. I was on the bottom bunk, letting my mate take the top. When I looked up was some sentence, and it said, Hello, you are going next, with a creepy smile. On the second day, we all went outside. There were teepee tents next to a field. I hung out in one with one of my friends. Some others hung out in a second tent. But in the third tent, I saw a shadow with a knife. Uh -oh. I told the teacher and another student who went in, but didn't come out. But nobody believed me, and there was nobody inside the tent. I thought something was really weird. On the third day, three of my roommates were out on a day trip with some others, which I was going to do the next day. I had done a mud course, and after that, I decided to have a shower. The water was black and disgusting, which added to this horrible week. All of a sudden, when I was still in the shower booth, the doorknob was shaking. I screamed, and when I got out, I saw a handwriting, you won't leave alive, on the wall. Well, uh, that's creepy. Then I saw, oh, that dog's uh, a shadow in the window. Oh my gosh. My room's door was locked while I was having a shower, so no one could enter in our room. The fourth day, I was taking a walk someplace that no one knew. Hey. And then I found a huge knife and blood-soaked clothes. I just hoped that this stupid and terrible camp would finish soon. Then the last night, I woke up in the middle of the night because I saw the oh same God. shadow leaving my room. And there was a knife on the floor, again. I couldn't sleep the rest of that night. The last day, I was left to clean the room and set the beds for the students, whoever would use it next. Uh -oh. When I was about to finish, I saw the door and it said, You are lucky you survived. I didn't have enough time, but next, I will not let you go. I panicked, so I ran from that creepy room. I told my teacher, however, by the time we got back, it was gone. As I got onto the bus, I looked in the window of that room, and the shadow stared back at me, with a decapitated head in one hand, and in the other hand, oh the gosh. same knife I had seen twice. Later, when I came back from the camp, I heard about that place. It was an orphanage and a mental institution that had many mysterious deaths. To this day, I wondered what would have happened if I'd spent longer than five days at that place. Scary. Yeah, um, I'm done watching this. Anyway, uh, 
I hope you enjoyed. That was very scary. Not gonna be able to sleep tonight. Anyway, I will also be filming another video. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, have a good rest of your day, night, morning, whatever. Bye!